Hi, welcome to my new video. Today I would like to focus on an important topic, which is the data ingestion. And I, I'm analyzing it here in the context of the cloud computing. So that's the reason why you can see the title of this presentation, data ingestion on the cloud. But generally you should be able to apply the principles from it, even to the on-premise systems. So let me start with the first and the easiest strategy, which is the synchronous data delivery. So the principle is very straightforward. So on your screen, you can see three main blocks that will interact with our data system. So on the leftmost side, you have the client application. It can be, as I said, a web browser, a mobile application, but also something running in the background and generating some events in the middle you have the ingestion api so it's the api gateway covered in the article uh, linked in the description of this video and it will intercept any call and pass it to some http endpoint that will be responsible for taking this data and adding it to the data system which in our case uses a streaming broker as a main data storage because it's much easier to dispatch in real time or in batch even than a data addressed storage. So how does the interaction look like? So we begin with, uh, we start with uh, an event. It can be one event or multiple batched events, but for the sake of this uh, patter pattern, you must to ensure that these all these events are written delivered to the data system in a single transaction so all or nothing so the event is goes to to the application it can be for example a java javascript front end that sends it to the ingestion api and at this moment it's quite important to 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 have in mind that this at the moment of delivering the event across the network the client application loses uh, it so doesn't know about it anymore and uh, after that we deliver from the http endpoint to the data system and later we correctly persist this event in the data system and send the confirmation to the ingestion api and the client it's a very simple pattern but it has some major drawbacks which is the performance because as you can see if you had the second, the third, the fourth events to deliver, we would do it one by one, which is obviously very slow due to the uh, network traffic initiated every time for every event unitarily. So to overcome these, uh, these issues, we can use uh, an asynchronous communication, asynchronous mode, uh, that provides a better latency, but you will see introduces some data loss risk. Of course, this risk was also present in the synchronous mode, but it will be much more, I think, painful in the asynchronous delivery. So let me show how this asynchronous delivery works. To start, we have a free event generated on the client side, and we start by delivering the first one to the HTTP endpoint. Now we can already start without knowing that the data system correctly accepted and persisted this first event, we can start to deliver the second one. So meantime, uh, the HTTP endpoint delivers the first event and application sends the second event already to the HTTP endpoint. And now we can see that two persistence, two request persisting the data are arriving to the data system and we have the first event confirmed and already the third event is about go being to, to be delivered and of course we persisted correctly the second and finally the third event but as you can see there is a problem with data loss we can imagine a situation like like that, the data system can simply go down or the network connection may be broken and these two events will be 
lost. As I said, this problem also exists for the synchronous communication, but since it's synchronous, at worst, we will lose only one event and not two as in this, in this slide. To fix this asynchronous issue, we can use uh, asynchronous communication, but with checkpointing. And as you, as you will see, it will deliver the data at least once. So this asynchronous with checkpointing mode differs just a bit, just a slightly from the previous one because each delivery part, so the client and the ingestion API has a local storage for the persistence. And it's quite important to mention that the life cycle of this local storage doesn't depend on the life cycle of the ingestion API, meaning that you can kill the ingestion API and still have the data checkpointed and available for other instances of this ingestion API component. So let me see, let me show you how does it work in this mode. So the client once again receives the first event, but before delivering it to the next box, it persists it in the local store. And later the interaction is very the same as in the previous slide, except that each time we have one new event in these boundaries, we purchase it in the local checkpoint storage. And each time the data system or generally the next um, box to the checkpointed system confirms the correct persistence. So here we have the situation where the ingestion API is trying to deliver the first event which is present in the checkpoint store. And here we have the situation when the data system confirmed the correct persistence of this first event. So each time this situation, this confirmation happens, the box will, the, the component receiving this confirmation will remove the checkpointed event from the checkpoint storage. So here we have this for the ingestion API and now ingestion API will pass a successful code, HTTP code to the client and the client consequently will remove this event from his own checkpoint storage. So I will just quickly move the presentation because the logic is the same for all of the three events. And the question is why this mode works in the at least once delivery. So let's imagine the situation like that when we have two events cannot be being delivered to the data system and the HTTP confirmation about the correct delivery. You can see that the data system contains these two events in the event two and three and this confirmation simply cannot be delivered to the HTTP endpoint. So what will happen next when we will restart or recover this network partition is that the HTTP endpoint will take all the checkpointed values, events, the checkpointed events, and deliver them once again to the data system. And consequently, we will find a duplicates for these two, uh, for these two events. And of course, the interaction with the remaining parts will be the same as previously. So here you can see that we have better performance than for the synchronous communication that we don't lose the data, but that on the other hand, we can have some duplicate. And of course we have a much, a bigger impact on the IO because each time you receive, uh, our blocks receives some events, they need to persist them. So to make some uh, writes on disk, even though for the client application, it will be more the browser storage or maybe the smart or smartphone storage, it's still an action to purchase the data, which is much slower than keeping it just in memory. So if you want to discover the full article, which includes in addition to this client part, also a few, some explanation about the cloud services you can use to implement in this 
online ingestion API and invite you to the article which is linked in the description of this video. It was Bartosz Konieczny from waitingforclub.com. Thanks for watching.